Hey, what's up guys? My name is Nathan Hirsch. Thanks so much for joining me again. Welcome to week two of the Hustle Blood Diaries, where every week I try to cover a different aspect or area, concept of photography that I think is going to be beneficial and help you guys out. All right, so let's get right to it. Okay, so in this week's episode, I want to talk about focal length and specifically why it's important beyond the sort of basic elements of photography, but I mean specifically how to pick the right focal length, how to know which one to buy, which focal length lenses do you really need for your setup. And my goal too is help you save some time and some, some money and hopefully avoid some frustration along the way that kind of comes with this whole process of trying to figure out which one's the right one for you. I wanna go over what I've seen time and time again uh, with photographers and focal length and what happens and I can speak from experience as well because this is something that I've gone through myself and so here's what happens and you tell me if this feels familiar all right so you start off um, you know you get into photography for whatever reason and you pick up your first camera and usually it's got a kit lens with it the kit lens maybe it's not that great but you know what it's something it gets you out you, you've, you've got something you can roll with you know you get out there take some photos so typically your kit lens is going to have sort of a, a moderate or normal zoom range maybe from like um you know slightly wide angle to slightly telephoto all right um and you get out there and you take some shots and you're like oh this is cool what happens though is that you are inevitably going to start looking at other people's photographs other people's uh galleries and their portfolios and websites and all that stuff and you're going to notice a couple of things um their shots maybe don't look the same as yours and it's not just that they're technically maybe a little bit more advanced it's that physically they look different and most likely that's because they're shooting with uh, different focal lengths than you what then happens is usually you end up buying some more gear you buy some more lenses because you think well I want to be covered no matter what scenario what situation I'm in I want to be covered for any different scene that comes up right you don't want to be the photographer that's there that doesn't have the wide-angle lens or the telephoto lens you need to shoot whatever it is that everyone else is shooting so you end up buying a bunch of more gear uh, to cover those different focal lengths and this is what happened to me as well is that you know every time you take off you know you, you leave the house to go shoot whatever it is you know you've got this bag that ends up weighing like 20 pounds and you've got all this gear and it becomes very cumbersome and you know you're constantly switching lenses out um, for fear of missing a certain shot or capturing a scene you the way you think should be should be captured um, and photography changes a little bit at that point I think it becomes a little bit less fun a little bit more technical and uh, definitely more of a burden and I, and I hate to say burden because it's taking photographs you know what I mean it's not this is rocket science or manual labor per se but I guarantee you every photographer is gonna tell you um, that's gone down this whole through this whole cycle here they all reach that point where they're thinking like, why am I carrying four, five, six lenses every time I leave the house or every time I go on a trip, just in case that one chance that I need to capture this special moment, I need that one 300 millimeter uh, lens there for that one shot, you know, on the entire trip. What happens is they, they kind of come to this epiphany that, oh, I don't think I need all these lenses. And, and you know, a uh, bunch of famous uh, photographers from the past only shot with 35 millimeter lens. Uh, uh, Henri Cartier-Bresson only used a, used a 50 millimeter lens his entire career he shot with that Leica that one lens that one camera that one Leica he's incredible you know what I mean so I need to be more like him and more like uh, Annie Leibovitz and all these other photographers that just kind of kept it simple and picked maybe one focal length at least early on in their career so what happens then is you end up selling a bunch of that gear you just bought and you Think you're going to pare it down to, like I said, maybe just that one, that one uh, 35 millimeter, 150 millimeter lens. All right. Then you go out. You're feeling good. You're feeling light. You don't have a big backpack full of stuff. All right. You're like, I'm the cool guy. Got my one lens. I don't need more lenses. It's all good. You get to the scene. Sure enough, it's not wide enough. It's not, uh, you know, long enough. I can't, I can't get into the action. I'm too far away. I'm too zoomed out. I was all in on some wide-angle lenses early on, and I'd show up to a scene, and, and um, it's just too. The lens is too wide. You know, you don't realize that when you have a wide-angle lens, you have a lot of space to fill there. And if the scene itself maybe isn't that interesting, you know, you've got big pockets of space that are just sort of like wasted, and there's nothing there. That's not going to be a very good photo. Okay, here's where I'm going to save you guys 
a ton of time and a ton of money as well. Okay guys, so here's what you're gonna do, all right? I want you to go to your local camera store and if they have rental gear, I want you to rent two lenses. And if you don't have a local shop like that, go ahead and there's a ton of uh, websites online that you can go ahead and rent gear from. But you know, try and support your local store. I try to as well, um, you know, it's just a good thing to do. All right, so anyways, you, 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 go, to, you go down to the store. I want you to rent a one wide angle lens and I want you to rent the one that has the sort of the widest um, uh, range you can get. For a full length equivalency, this would be a 16 to 35 millimeter wide angle lens. So it's going really wide on the 16 millimeter end to more moderate on the 35 millimeter end. I want you to then rent a 70 to 200 or 70 to 300 ideally. And that's it. I want you to just get those two lenses. Then. Here's your assignment. All right. I want you to pick a day where you have a good chunk of time, a couple of hours, okay? And you are going to just bring one of those lenses, just bring one, that's it, keep it really simple. So for your first day, I want you to bring that wide angle lens with you out wherever it is, you're at the ocean, you're at the forest, you're at this cool cemetery place where I am, and you are gonna stick with that one wide angle lens. Not only that, you are going to pick a focal length on that range from 16 to 35. Remember, you can zoom anywhere in between there. You know, you can pick 22, you can pick 18. Uh, what I want you to do is I want you to set it to a specific focal length in that range, and I want you to lock it in. Pretend like it's a prime lens and you can't zoom anymore. That's it, okay? So for chunks of time, ideally 10, 20, 30 minutes of, uh, at a time, I want you to shoot with only that focal length locked in. Okay, so walking around, taking different shots, all at 16 millimeter, all at 20 millimeter, whatever it is that you picked. Don't zoom, resist that urge to be constantly zooming around, okay? Learn to zoom with your feet, walking around. Try to figure out, can I still capture things at 60 millimeter if I just zoom with my feet, just, just move closer to the scene? How does that change the perspective? Does it distort things, you know? Um, play around with it but the the idea here is that you want to really lock into a specific focal lengths so that this way we can really narrow down the ones that you like okay so you know you've done 20 minutes at 60 millimeter switch it up I want you to go into 20 millimeter okay or 22 or 23 or whatever go in small increments at first and then do the same thing so go ahead and then shoot for 30 minutes however long with that next focal length locked in Okay, and then so on and so on. And so you've sort of gone at least in like maybe every four to five millimeters in steps there and until you get all the way to the, the end there, 35 millimeters. Day two, I want you to do the same thing, but now do that with your telephoto lens. So you've got your 70 to 200 millimeter lens. I want you to lock in at 70, shoot for 20 minutes straight. Walking around, shooting different things, flowers, whatever it is, trees, people, doesn't matter what it is, okay? The idea is that you're practicing, you're trying to figure out what it is that, that, that speaks to you. Okay, so you've gone through 70, um, you know, 75, 80, go all the way up, you know, take your time. Um, so here's the fun part. You're gonna load all these different images you took at different focal lengths. You're gonna load them up into Lightroom or Bridge or whatever you use for your software. And I want you to take your time and go through each set. And what you're gonna find almost immediately is you are going to eliminate a couple right off the bat that just for whatever reason don't speak to you uh, and speak to your eye and what do you think you know you see as being uh, you know capturing the scene properly or just I love that that focal length or I don't like that focal length you're gonna know almost right away okay so what I want you to start doing is eliminating the ones that you don't like for me I didn't like anything really wider than like 20 millimeter just for walking around too wide too hard to find um, meaningful things in the foreground, um, you know what I mean? It just kind of distorts things too much. It's not my thing, I'm not a landscape photographer. You know, I, I, for me, I was able to eliminate that one almost off the bat. Okay, um, you might love that that one, and you might not like the moderate uh, wide angle shots. Maybe they're, not as, um, maybe they're not as interesting. You know, everyone's different. That's the beauty of photography, okay? So you're gonna go through, you're gonna, gonna start eliminating focal lengths that don't mean as much to you, and then you're gonna start conversely then finding ones that are meaningful to you, that you love, that you feel like, you know, you were able to capture so many different things at 35 millimeter or at 100 millimeter. Um, and you saw things a little bit differently through those focal lengths or they, you know, maybe, they, maybe they're, um, maybe they just jump out at you as, wow, I never thought I really liked things close up 
at 200 300 millimeters but I love it that's the beauty of it okay so and hopefully you'll come away with at least like two to three focal lengths that you love all right I think that's really the sweet spot you know you shouldn't need any more than three personally because a lot of them are very close and again zooming with your feet don't sleep on it okay it's a it's a real thing in most scenarios you can actually get closer uh, you can walk closer to a subject you can walk farther away and that will change the composition of the scene that'll change the framing all right so you don't need to get every single focal length in the book your feet do a lot of the work for you okay so now the even more fun part is now you get to buy some more gear okay which every every <laughs> you get to buy more gear which is every photographer's favorite part uh it's my wife's least favorite part you know go figure you know ideally i think you want to find one sort of wide angle focal length and one mid telephoto photo um focal length that'll sort of they complement each other so at least you have those two covered that'll basically get you 99 percent of the time covered in terms of capturing the scene you want so now there's now is the fun part you get to go back to those websites um back to your local camera store and you can focus on just those two focal lengths instead of thinking about this huge range from 16 to 100 or whatever i didn't mention the 50 millimeter focal length earlier because what happens is that when you have that wide angle uh range and you have that telephoto range you'll know almost immediately that you're missing that middle and for me, I don't really like that 50 millimeter kind of normal range. I find it a little bit boring, not for every scene, but for me, for a majority of the time, it's not wide enough and it's not close enough. So I knew off the bat for me that I was gonna, I wasn't gonna run with the 50 millimeters, it just wasn't worth it. So, but you might know immediately that you missed that normal range, that, that range that's like right in the sweet spot in the middle. All right, so that's, that's great because now you know that you might wanna do a 50 millimeter and a, maybe a wider angle lens. So let me know how you did, okay? Let me know if this exercise was helpful for you, if you were able to sort of pare things down and pick two focal blanks that really spoke to you that mean something to you. Let me know in the comments below. I appreciate it. And thanks so much, guys. I'll see you next time. All right, bye-bye.